Hey, what's up, peeps? It's your man Tron Walker here again. And I'm just trying to give you all an update as to what is going on with my deck. So, with the release of Zendikar Rising recently, I have been running into an extremely large amount of control decks. Or just way more consistent burn decks. Pretty much, if you could think of a type of deck, there have been some cards released in Zendikar Rising that will make those decks a lot faster. And this deck included. Now a card that stood out to me very much when I saw the you know spoilers get released was this card, Cascading Cataracts. And it's a land that says you can either tap it for one colorless mana or pay five mana and tap it and add five mana of any color to your mana pool. So you can mix and match, you can do green, blue, whatever you choose. But that has been coming in extremely handy for me because I'm playing a Planeswalker deck that's running all five colors. And now that I have something else to help out Oath of Nyssa, I am extremely happy about that. Though like y'all noticed I'm only playing one of it. The reason for that is having more than one doesn't really make it better especially with me playing Tron already there's really no lands that will benefit if I have multiple copies of it out except the Tron lands alright so besides that I have decided to add Sandra Torch of Defiance to my deck the reason for this is she just has a good ultimate that can you know make it to where whenever I cast a card I can deal 5 damage to whichever target I choose and you know that always comes in handy the other thing is she can help me build up my mana ramp and she can help me draw cards and another bonus she can also deal 4 damage to a creature for negative 3 loyalty counters which, like everyone knows, in modern, you're gonna see a creature. It's very, very rare that you don't run into a creature, so. She has always came in handy for me, but a majority of the time, I'd say when she's hitting the battlefield, doubling seasons out, and I am getting my money's worth out of her. Because from then on, every card that I cast, I get to deal 5 damage to something I choose. Another thing that I have added to the deck is Teferi, Hero of Demonaria. Now, the reason why I added this Hero of Dominaria is because of his negative 8 ability. I got an emblem that says whenever I draw a card, I can exile a permanent an opponent controls. Which, like you all notice with this deck, there are, a, there are a lot of things that help me draw cards. From Street Wraith, Chromatic Star and Sphere, Metamorphose, Planeswalkers, because I, let's see, my man Nicol Bolas right here. He lets me draw cards. Nahir lets me draw cards. Torch of Defiance. Uh, that just exiles a card. And then Tamio here lets me draw cards. So because there's so much draw in this deck, I wanted to try to, you know, capture it and make some benefit out of it. Now, because there are so many cards, I mean so many decks in modern right now, that are playing control, mainly because of the cards that got I added from Zendikar Rising. Uh, the Summer Veils have been coming in clutch though. Now, I do understand that I can add in another Teferi that, you know, prevents my opponent from countering my spells. But, let's be honest. If somebody's playing counter, they're not going to let Teferi hit the battlefield. But, that is one card I'm still considering right now. I haven't tested it yet. But, so far, the, sum the Veil of Summers have been doing extremely well. 
so I'm just gonna keep going with that for right now. Alright, this is where it gets kind of shocking. I have decided to add Sandra the Flame Caller to this deck. The reason why I decided to add her to the deck is because you know, she can create two 3 1 elemental creature tokens. And with doubling season out, it actually turns into four 3 1 elemental creature tokens. But that's just with one doubling season out. Any more doubling seasons out than that, and it turns into more tokens than that. Also, they have haste. And she can deal X amount of damage to all creatures. And then the other one that helps out, Hero of Dominaria. She can let me discard my hand and draw that many cards plus one. So I've had plenty of games where Hero of Dominaria went off with a negative eight ability. And then I follow up with Sandra using her zero ability to discard my hand and draw that many cards. And next thing you know, my opponent's field has been completely wiped because I've drawn so many cards. So yeah, that has been coming in clutch for me and I absolutely love using the card. Now I added this Nicol Bolas in here mainly because Nicol Bolas is just a very fun, overpowered planeswalker. This version specifically has four abilities. The plus two ability is it makes my opponent exile cards from the top of their library until they exile and until they exile a non-land card, and I get to cast that card without paying its mana cost. And that adds two loyalty counters. The plus one ability makes each opponent exile two cards from his or her hand, which comes in clutch against control, burn, specifically those two type of decks because, you know, if you can get their hands to where they have no cards in it, you are not doing bad because that means that at least you know you can play for that turn. And potentially the turn after. Just depends on if you have 5 life or 3 life if you're playing against Burn. But yeah, you guys get the point. His negative 4 ability does 7 damage to an opponent or a creature an opponent controls. Which, you know, that's good. Gets to kill a creature. Has some versatility to it. And for his ultimate, exile each non-land permanent your opponent controls. Now, while he's hitting mainly non-land permanents with Hero of Demonaria, I can choose whichever permanent I want. So that pretty much hits lands and everything else my opponent controls. So yeah, there have been a couple of games where people have been saying, you know what, hey, I'm still alive. And I'm like, okay, I'll do zero ability on Sandra. And next thing you know, I exile all their lands and all their permanents. And they're like, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and scoop. So yeah, those effects have been coming in extremely, extremely good for me. Even against control, I've been still being able to get them off. Now over here, still have Ugin, you know, he's Ugin, he's a good card, matter of fact, great card because what's been happening with me is on games where opponents are playing a lot of permanents, mana dorks and stuff of that nature, I've just been going to turn four and using Ugin if I don't have doubling season out and a planeswalker to, you know, go off that way. Ugin has been ending up in my hands a majority of times. Which, that point in time, you know, I am going to go ahead and use him 150%. Now, I do understand that with Oath of Nissa out, it does exile Oath of Nissa. 
but that is also part of the reason why I decided to add in the cascading cataracts because I can then go ahead and use that to set my mana up instead of needing Oath of Nissa out in the battlefield. By the way, speaking of the card draw thing that I just mentioned, Fountain of Renewal helps with card draw, so does Relic of Progenitus along with Veil of Summer. So uh, I'm pretty sure y'all get the point here. This deck is drawing a lot of cards and Hero of Dominaria is a way to capitalize on drawing those cards. And now so we still have Force of Vigor in here just because we run into so much hate. Blood Moon, honestly I'm not even really worried about Blood Moon. I would just want to be able to get 5 lands and after I have 5 lands I can make almost anything happen. But things like Stony Silence and stuff of that nature are pretty much what this card is in here for. Or if I'm playing against Artifacts. Now I set up the Ancient Way. This card got put on the sideboard mainly because of the fact that it has three different colors in its mana cost. And while using the ultimate for this card, it doesn't necessarily win you the game. So because of that, I was like, you know what, I might as well just put it on the sideboard right now and test out main board and see how these cards that I added in do. And so far, they've been perf performing extremely well, so I might take Narset out of this deck. The main selling point with her, why I kept her in here, is because she could allow me to draw a card and then discard a card and deal damage to target creature or planeswalker that an opponent controls. And you know, discarding an Emrakul and dealing 15 damage to something, I'm pretty sure that's gonna kill it. Hey, yeah, it would even kill an Emrakul if you could target it. But yeah, so Narset might be out of the deck. And that's still to be determined. Now with Karn here, He's came in clutch a couple times for me, especially like I said before against control and burn decks, just because I'm trying to get cards out of their hands. You all will notice I added a second Ugin to the deck, and that's for the same reasons I listed above. But also, now that I came back to it, Ugin here, his negative 10 ability allows me to draw seven cards, gain seven life, and put up to seven permanents into play, which once again is this deck drawing cards, which Hero of Dominaria is definitely helping us capitalize on. But those are the things that have changed with my deck recently, and I'm still having a lot of fun playing the deck. I very very rarely run into an opponent where I play against them and they tell me oh man this deck sucks or this wasn't an actual fun game like I think the last person I played against was someone playing burn and this was them playing a burn deck from let's say from last year so they didn't really incorporate many of the new cards that could help out burn from this year and I was able to win against the burn deck 2-0 which on one hand I am surprised about but at the same time it means that this deck is actually getting better and now I just have to go and look at all the cards in the car rising to see if there are any more cards that could potentially help me out or make this deck combo a little bit faster but from what I've seen with the engine that I have going on now, you know, with the Sylvan Scrangs and the Expedition map, this deck is extremely, extremely consistent with getting the Tron lands. On very rare occasions where I don't get the Tron lands, I honestly consider if it gets the turn 
three and I have more than one non tron non tron land out that means that now I'm setting myself a turn back which means that it's going to give my opponent more of an opening to you know go ahead and capitalize and win the game so when I'm playing at the very least I try to have at least one Tron land and any other land in my hand in the beginning now whether that is another Tron land of the same type or any other land card I'll take it but partly that's because of the fact that I know if you start with one land with this deck you are going to be in a world of hurt because the second land draw and third land draw are not guaranteed and I realize that with at least two lands out you should be able to make it work to where you can get your third land before you get to the turn where you have to play it so yeah if you all do decide to play this deck just make sure you don't keep any one land draws in the beginning so if you draw your seven card and you only see one land I'd say go ahead and reshuffle because otherwise it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a very sketchy game for you unless you know you end up with four street rates in your hand and you want to lose eight life right off the bat which I highly do not recommend but hey it depends on who you're playing against and how they play but that's the advice that I have for you all. So yeah, that's it for me in this deck. As far as where I'm at right now. Now I realized in my previous videos I did not leave a link below the video to my tapped out profile with this deck. So in this video I'm going to make sure I leave a link below. That way if you all want to come in here and you know play test a deck for yourself and see just how it would play out, you have that opportunity. And if you all have any questions or have any thoughts on this deck, just go ahead and post them in the comments below and I will be happy to get back with you all. And for everyone that has been giving me consistent feedback, I appreciate all the help. Hey, some of the things that you all thought about I honestly did not you know like the Zendikar Rising with all the new cards in it I am still learning about you know some of the interactions with those cards so hey if y'all have any feedback let me know I appreciate the support thank you all for watching and until next time I hope you all keep enjoying modern and if you have a fun deck of yours that you would like to share, please post that link in the description. I mean, a link in the comments. That way I can go check it out because I absolutely love playing fun decks. And I know that you all have the same mindset with Magic the Gathering. Otherwise, none of you all would be checking out these videos. So, appreciate all the support and I will see you all next time.